Hey guys, um, so I wanted to, to talk about something that's sort of um, going around the internet right now, um, and that is um, the Christian response to certain Christians coming out, pun intended, um, as being affirming of um, the LGBT community. And by affirming, I mean... Um, suggesting that there be full inclusion and that um, gay and lesbian individuals do not need to change their orientation or do not need to be celebrate, but that their um, relationships can be fully celebrated within the church. And that is, that is a view held by many Christians. Um, I would say it's a view held by more Christians than are, than are public and open about it, to be honest. Um, in a lot of conversations that I have, I find out that people are affirming, but they're scared to admit it because of any number of reasons. Um, I think one of the most compelling reasons that people um, don't talk about being fully inclusive um, is because they are concerned about backlash. And um, we are seeing that backlash on a very public platform um, with Jen Hatmaker's recent interview that she did with Jonathan Merritt over at Religious News Service. Um, now, I will say full disclosure that Jen is a dear friend of mine. Um, and so it has been interesting to watch this unfold on a number of levels. Um, first, you know, as a kind of like societal thing. And second, watching it um, as a friend. I'm um, watching this happen to a friend. But Jen, um, if you're not familiar, if you're not kind of in Christian circles, I'll kind of try to give the background. Um, information, but Jen is, um, I would say, probably one of the most, if not the most, influential Christian speakers and writers. Um, she is incredibly smart. She's hilarious. She's very popular. Her books are popular. Her speaking's popular. Um, I've read her books. I've seen her speak. She's incredible, and she's very smart, and um, she's a dedicated Christian who loves Jesus a lot. She um, knows her scripture. She knows the Bible well. Um, she is a Bible preacher, old school. Um, and Jen, over the over the course of, well, I don't want to speak for Jen too much um, because I am her friend, and I, you know, I, um, I will say what she has said publicly. You know, is is that she's been on a journey and has come to the place where she feels um, that she wants to extend um, within the church, you know, like full inclusion. Um, and that her scriptural understanding is that she's been on a theological journey. This, these decisions for Jen were not made um, based on feelings. They were not made based on um, wanting to be like, more liked or more popular. Um, that this was, you know, she has come to this conclusion based on real study, academic study. Um, and there are many books um, written by both lay people and theologians that have articulated, you know, a sort of biblical stance or theological stance on this issue. And here's what's interesting to me. Uh, well, there's a number of things that are interesting to me about the backlash. So, again, backstory is um, after this interview came out with Jen, um, there was a huge public backlash, and you're seeing, you know, pastors and theologians on Twitter take her to task and suggest that she's sort of out of the Christian club. Um, Lifeway, which is the kind of major publishing house for Christians, stopped selling her books, stopped carrying her books altogether. She has been, you know, one of their kind of premier authors, and. Um, and then even I have watched some of Jen's even personal friends feel the need to articulate a public stance um, about this issue. And I feel like Jen, you know, this, I'm not, I'm not talking about this issue because I want to talk about Jen, actually. Um, I, I feel like Jen is sort of the whipping post on this issue, and she is sort of the, the person to go before because she is, is one of the, um, one of the first, you know, real really public evangelicals to take not one of I mean not the first but 
but one of. Um, she is definitely going before, I think, many others. Um, and I think we will definitely see more people. Um, so this isn't necessarily about Jen, but I think, you know, the situation around Jen sort of, it's a catalyst for this conversation. But what I find interesting about this whole thing is, you know, the backlash that she's seeing, um, I am seeing so many people preface their backlash with, well, I just need to stand up for scripture. I just need to stand up for what I believe and I need to correct when I see someone, you know, misinterpreting scripture. And, you know, the assumption um, that everyone is making who doesn't agree is that Jen has a low view of scripture. Um, So here's the thing. We as Christians in the Christian club, those of us in the club, of which I am, um, we disagree on any number of things theologically. You can put 10 Christians in a room and we're going to disagree probably on 10 different things. Um, I have friends who think that women should not be in ministry and I have friends who think who are pastors, women pastors. Um, There are Christians who think that salvation happens at the moment of baptism and there are Christians that think that salvation happens when you say the sinner's prayer. And there's Christians who think, eh, do you even need to be saved? There are Christians who think that when you take communion, that element turns into the body and blood of Christ in your mouth. And there's Christians who think that communion is just a nice symbol. Um, there are Christians who think you need to quote a confession. And there's Christians who think that that is um, not theologically sound. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on. There are post-millennial Christians and pre Christians. I mean, I went to Bible college. There are any number of issues that you could pull Christians on and they don't agree from how salvation happens all the way up to what happens when you die. Christians are not in agreement on the Bible. We cannot say the Bible is clear on X, Y, Z when we all have this much disagreement. I mean, the truth of the matter is the Bible is not super clear on some things. So I find it interesting that with this wealth of disagreement that Christians have somehow been able to work through and be part of publishing houses, speaking teams, and call each other Christians, that it's this issue, the issue of including gay people, that everybody has to be theologically correct about. And that we are going to disclude, not just, we're not just going to disclude the LGBTs, we're going to disclude anybody who wants to include them. Um, And that to me is horrifying. That this is where so many people feel the need to assert their theological stance. I mean, why not assert your theological stance on, you know, I mean, so many other things. There are so many other things that we could argue about. And the fact that this has become a litmus test for how Christian someone is, for how much they care about or study the Bible, and for what people feel the need that they need to be vocal about. Um, And, you know, here's the thing, too. I'm seeing so many people being called brave because they have decided to write these statement pieces about what Jen said. That's not brave. That is not brave. I mean, if you woke up two weeks ago and decided, I'm going to share my theological opinion on homosexuality, that might be brave. But when you write an opinion piece that's based on throwing Jen Hatmaker under the bus because she's popular and says something you don't agree with, that's not brave. You're not saying that out of some grand moral conviction that you woke up with. That's, you're just trying to prove somebody wrong on something that makes you super uncomfortable. And clearly Christians are super uncomfortable about gay people because if we weren't, this would not be the theological fight we're all having with each other. So that's one thing that's bugging me is that we're making this the theological fight when we, we, we have plenty of other theological disagreements. The second thing that's really bugging me is this notion that anybody who doesn't take the Bible as completely literal 
um, on the issue of homosexuality, um, doesn't hold a high view of scripture and is picking and choosing on what they take as literal versus uh, cultural or contextual edict in the Bible. Here's the deal, you guys. We all, all pick and choose about what we take as prescriptive from the Bible and specifically from the Old Testament, which is where most of these verses are coming from. We're all picking and choosing. I don't know. Literally, I don't know a single person who takes every edict in the Bible as a prescriptive. The only person, honestly, that I know who has done that is Rachel Held Evans, and she did it to write a book to prove the point that we're all picking and choosing. So, you know, unless you are going to go out this weekend and protest Red Lobster for serving shellfish, or you are going to go out and sleep in a tent this weekend when you get your period, um, or you're going to stone somebody because they are out of line, um, or you're covering your head as a woman, like you're not taking every single scripture as literal either. None of us are. A lot of the stuff in the Old Testament is culturally contextual. You know that and I know that, which is why you're not following all of it. Um, You're not probably taking the entire Sabbath and following it like, anyway. Again, I could go on and on on this, but I think it's insulting. It's insulting to your fellow Christian brothers and sisters to say to someone who's come to a different interpretation of scripture that they just don't get it or that they don't care about the Bible. Um, It's insulting and it's also, it's hypocritical. Um, And I mean, again, this this isn't a conversation about Jen, but to use her as an example, I don't know someone who cares more about scripture. I don't. That girl loves Jesus with her whole heart and cares deeply about the Bible. Um, And to see her being thrown under the bus is, it's so hurtful. And it's hurtful to me, but let's talk about who it's really hurtful to. The, the whole LGBT community. I mean, you guys, Christians, let's circle up here. This is embarrassing. This is so embarrassing that a popular Christian came out and said, I'm cool with people being gay and it caused this much of a backlash. It's embarrassing. And people are watching. And people get. I mean, nobody's stupid. They get that this is the argument that we're having over theology and not anything else. They get it. So anyway, I don't know. I just, I just felt the need to rant about that today because um, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in in the Christian community right now. I'm honestly, I'm embarrassed. Um, I'm disappointed in, I'm disappointed that this is becoming such an issue. And I'm sad that the church is having this kind of litmus test over whether or not you're a real Christian. Guess what? A bunch of us, myself included, are real Christians. And we are reading scripture not reading our feelings, but reading scripture and coming to the conclusion that we're okay. Um, we're okay with people being gay and not okay. Like love the center. Like we're okay with like, go ahead and get married in our church and come and serve in children's ministry in our church. And yeah. Um, Anyway, yeah, we need to love better. We do. Um, We need to love better. We need to, you know, I I get, I, I get that there are a lot of people out there who feel that scripture compels them to, um, hold a view that homosexuality is a sin. I get it. I get it. And I've, I have been that person. 
Um, I get it, but this, that feeling and that scriptural interpretation that you hold, um, that should not be your sole public platform. Probably shouldn't be your public platform at all. Um, And if that's what you're shouting from the rooftops over any other number of scriptural interpretations you hold, I think you need to have a come to Jesus meeting with yourself. Anyway, um, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say. Um, but, uh, yeah, I would love to hear your comments, um, and thoughts on this. 